Oh no, it's coming again. No, 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 we're gonna, we gotta let it go. All right, cool. There it is. There it is. See, it wouldn't be back unless something messed up. Welcome back. Oh, of course. Ladies and gentlemen, we had a little summer break. We had E3. Alex had some stuff to do, so we gave, we gave everyone a week off. By everyone, I mean me and Alex. We had a week <laughs> of the podcast. We enjoyed ourselves. We're gonna, we're gonna do like, a, like in school. We're gonna, we're gonna say, what did you do in your uh, <laughs> summer break, Alex? What did, what did you do in your summer break? Uh, I went traveling. That's good. Yeah. Did you have fun. Yeah, yeah, I, I had, I enjoyed it. That's great. I Very did absolutely nothing. Mm. So. Mm -hmm. There's that. I played some video games. We'll talk about that and what you've been playing. But right now, just living the life. You know what I mean? Mm. Having a great time. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Easy Cheers Game Podcast. This is the beautiful week of July 1st, 2021. I'm one of your hosts, as always, Elijah, sitting digitally through the internet. Sitting alongside me is Alex. How you doing? I'm doing great, Alex. Thank you for asking. Now, we had a week break. We'll come back to Energize, ready to talk about it. And there's a good bit of news. And there's actually some very strange events. Now, if we take a week off, it seems like the whole gaming industry kind of just has this weird lull period. Now, mm -hmm. I can't wait to talk about one specific story with you. Um, there's a second story where I wasn't originally going to cover because it's kind of over, but it kind of isn't, but it kind of is. Mm -hmm. we'll talk about that at the end of the show though because a lot of people have already talked about it but but really quickly if you want to support the show remember comment like subscribe share with a friend it's gonna be quick this week and of course patreon.com slash you already know the spiel thank you so much for listening now i want to start us off alex mm -hmm. there's a lot of news let's do a rumor roundup first okay and then we're gonna get into my question for you got it one of the rumors coming out, Velvet Veil is apparently a spiritual successor to Bloodborne. This was super unsubstantiated, so I literally just was like, I guess I'll bring it up on the show. We'll talk about it very briefly, and we'll go through it. So really quickly, Alex, I, there there was almost nothing with the rumor. I didn't even put anything else because it was all just like, you know, it was blank. It could be right, could be wrong, but yeah. do you think what's more possible to you, Bloodborne 2 or a Bloodborne dash two, where it's like you know, it's not really Bloodborne two, but it basically so like a, is. So it's like a like a like a like a one point five type of mm -hmm. thing. Like a like a demon like a Demon Souls to the Dark Souls, you know. Mm -hmm. Demon Souls is a game, but they had to make Dark Souls because Demon gotcha. Souls was so a PS, PlayStation like exclusive. So, so do you think Bloodborne is the the Demon Souls to Velvet Veil? Basically. Okay. Do you do you think a Velvet Veil is more likely than a Bloodborne Two? I feel like now could it be a code name, and it is actually is Bloodborne Two. Could be the the actual rumor was it's a spiritual successor, meaning right. it's not technically Bloodborne, but it's meant to be a sequel. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, not sure. Yeah, me either. What I think of when I see this, I go. I guess it's very hard to make a sequel to Bloodborne because it's not even really that type I mean, of game. I mean, right? as if you see the ending, I mean, is there really a sequel to that? Uh, it, see, it's it's like Dark Souls. Where it's like, are there even sequels? I feel like it's just like it just happens again. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I've never fully understand Dark Souls, and I don't think there's many I people mean, that could actually go do prequel but it's a it's a second it's the next game but it's a prequel to the first game I i'm mean, gonna be real with you i still don't fully understand what happened so i i, I do I, and don't i i know there's three endings so like mm -hmm. i don't know we've talked about it enough know. we talked about it enough really quick one alan wake remastered was spotted in the epic game store database makes sense mm -hmm. remedies working mm -hmm. with them they have the ip now makes sense and that. and we know that they want to bring it back with the controlled DLC that they did, which was actually pretty good. This was surprising, but could mean nothing. This is from Jeffrey Grubb's store. That's over at, um, at GameSpeed. So he said that Microsoft and Hideo Kojima have signed a letter of intent. Now, if you don't know what that is, a letter of intent means nothing and something all at the same time. So since 
Hideo and Microsoft have signed a letter of intent. That means they are essentially agreeing that they might work together. Kind of is basically what it means. It's a maybe. It's kind of like when you're asked on a date Mm -hmm. and you'll go, we'll see. You know, it's like that. It's like, you know, not yes, not no. We'll see. Um, a little bit uh, mentioned there are interested in working together. Again, this means all this means nothing until we actually see like some sort of concrete thing. But um, uh, the project is cloud based, and they for some reason brought up the fact that it is unlikely to fall apart, hmm. which is a weird thing to add to it. But yeah, whatever. Uh, Alex, first off, if this is if this actually comes true and Microsoft was able to essentially not you know not poach because. They probably aren't buying anything from Hideo, but if Microsoft is actually able to publish an exclusive Xbox game, kind of wild that you got kind of literally the poster boy of PlayStation almost to work on an exclusive Xbox game. That'd be kind of nuts. Mm-hmm. It reminds me of um, when we heard Insomniac was missing Sunset Overdrive. I just, I just, that was one of those things that just blew my mind. I just couldn't, mm-hmm. I couldn't comprehend back then. I'm like, Insomniac's working on the Xbox? And then they never did again. And they were like, nah, we're just going to be purchased. That was a terrible experience. <laughs> <laughs> Their game didn't do good. That was not fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is your weekly reminder that Final Fantasy 1 through 6 is not coming to consoles. They sold a bunch of screenshots. So if I'm going to suffer, you motherfuckers are going to suffer right along with me. They showed off 1, 2, and 3. It looks great. I want to play them. I have to get a mobile device or I have to play on a PC to play them. And I mean mobile device, i.e. I mean iPad. I guess anything that's mobile. So yeah, iPad, iPhone, Android Laptop, devices. Does that work? Yeah, gingerbread software. I don't know what your Android kids are doing, but <laughs> if you you can your candy oh software, God. I don't know. It's, it's, that brings back the day. Licorice? Yeah. Are you on licorice? I don't know. Microsoft announces Xbox TV app. Well, they finally said it. Microsoft has officially basically said that they're working on a TV app with TV manufacturers for cloud gaming. Now, if you've stuck with us long enough, Phil kind of mentioned this last year, that they are thinking and trying to work alongside this. But now we have an official confirmation that, yes, this is indeed a real thing. Now, this is with... um, This is a comment from uh, Liz Hamron, CVP of Gaming Experience and Platforms. God, doesn't that just sound like a makeup title? Uh, Microsoft said they were already working on it, quote, some of which won't come to light for years, end quote. And then they also provided this quote, cloud is the key to our hardware and Game Pass roadmaps, but no one should think we're slowing down on our core console engineering. In fact, we're accelerating it, he said in a uh, basic a, a video briefing. We're already hard at work on new hardware and platforms, some of which won't come to light for years, but even as we build the future, we're focused on extending the Xbox experience to more devices today so we can reach more people. End quote. Alex, this is one of those things that we've kind of saw coming. We in, in literally oh, immediately kind of said it when they started That's kind serious. of making a more Game Pass app like experience. Mm-hmm. This was inevitable, especially when they did the whole X Cloud thing. It's like, oh, I mean, it just makes sense to put it on a TV, right? You, all you need is a controller at that point. And then yeah. you get the TV app, you pay some subscription service for Game Pass, and then it's yours forever. Now, the thing is, how are they going to get the controller to connect to the TV? Because is it going to be Bluetooth? Or do you have to wire it to the USB port behind the TVs? Like, that's going to suck. Yeah, I assume Bluetooth? I don't know. I'm assuming this is a new thing. So maybe with newer TVs, they're going to, like, they're going to incentivize them. (laughs) They're going to incentivize them maybe to insert Bluetooth. I I don't know if... I don't know if Bluetooth is prevalent in more maybe expensive for, TVs. Maybe for older TVs, they'll be like, oh, um, for okay, so for newer TVs, you can use the Xbox TV app, and it's integrated. You, it's like the Sony, it's like the Sony TVs with the yeah, the Sony TVs. They yeah. did the same thing, kind right, of. With older older TVs, you can use the streaming stick, and that has the built-in Bluetooth that you can connect to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I could definitely see a streaming stick. Hundred bucks, you get a- any Xbox, and maybe you Honestly, get Netflix or something. Much. Really, you want it? You think it'd be cheaper? Sixty. I think 70 70 cent. I could see it a hundred dollars. They launch at 99.99 and then hmm. you get some deal that makes it 80 bucks. But yeah, well, because I mean, it's, it's you're, you're just it's just a stick. I mean, you, you already if you own X, if you own Game Pass Ultimate already, I mean, for just a stick, I feel like 
100 is a little too much. I don't know. I, I don't know how, how much a stick should cost if I'm bringing Willow Chew, so I'm kind of just throwing it at the sand. Now, I mean, to be fair, to be fair, though, the Roku TV stick is sixty bucks. Really? I don't know. Yeah. Huh. The mm. One that I got from Black Friday or whatever it was like four K Roku and all that stuff. I think it was like fifty, sixty bucks. You got it on Black Friday though, right? So is would it usually be a hundred? No. Oh. Normally, I think I think normally it's sixty. I think I paid forty. Oh, I see. So normal price for sixty. Normally sixty. I, 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 yeah, I don't, I don't understand. Maybe maybe they have to make it beefier. Maybe they don't. Maybe it's just sixty bucks, which is. Kind of nuts to me if it's actually sixty dollars. Like they can sell you something that will play your games at sixty dollars. Pretty nuts. Pretty I mean, nuts. They've, they've been nuts lately. So now speaking of cloud gaming, this is something I, 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 I let's just talk about it. Well, well, well. It seems that the fine folks at Xbox want to have their cake and they want to eat it too. What I mean by that, well, Microsoft announced in a blog post recapping their E3 showcase this year that they will be utilizing their cloud gaming hardware to bring newer games made only for Series X and S to the long sunsetted Xbox One, One S, and One X system. This also comes along with news of them upgrading their servers that they would now utilize for cloud gaming. They said that they're upgrading them from their kind of One X architecture to now the Series X standards that they hold for their games. Um, there was no reference on when this would take place or how long this would be or any reference on if you have to pay for this service or not. But all we know is that they're doing it. The original Xbox One launched November 22nd, 2013. Alex, I, I mean, more more things of this. First off, what I mean by they're having their cake and eat it too. I want to bring you back um, not even a year ago, really, Alex. Uh, Microsoft comes out, makes a statement saying they will not make exclusives for the first two years of their systems. Do you remember this statement? I think it was Phil. Mr. Phil Spencer said this. Yeah, he no, was no, ex- he's, well, he wasn't big on exclusives then. Yeah, yeah, he, he never really, liked it, which is kind of hilarious now, but anyways. Um, he brings it up, says, first two years, they're not going to be Series X. Now, obviously, that's not true. We've seen Redfall not have a Series S, or sorry, not have an Xbox One logo on it. Um, mm-hmm. Starfield does not have a uh, Xbox One logo on it. I think those were the two big ones. There might be some other ones, but there were some games that they are publishing that is not now. Maybe you bring this in there. Say, hey, if you have an Xbox One, you're not going to be able to play the Series X, but if you have Game Pass and you have utilization of our cloud servers, mm-hmm. Only ten dollars, you're able to play that game anyways on your old system from 2013. Kind of nuts, dude. It's nuts. Like I had, um, I, just, I don't have it anymore, but I, uh, I think last year I still had the original big DVR Xbox. Ooh, and it wouldn't even, I don't, it would even either download Fortnite or play it. Like it was just like I was trying to download it for my little brother, and it just was not having it. That console is a literal dying old man. As, as like if you see that thing you kind you f- immediately feel bad for it because you feel like it can't breathe it's it's on a ventilator uh and uh, it was one of the it was like a certain ones in the like at the launch anytime you put the disc in it would go ah, ah. yep that's a that's always a fun name god what a terrible machine i remember trying to talk myself into like liking it and i did i talked myself into connect, loving that thing. bundle that 500 hey it's 500 dollars with the connect oh is there a bundle without it <laughs> no oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, do I have to buy the Connect? I don't want the camera. No. Oh well. Okay, I guess I'll pay. It was funny. Is back. What's funny is we just spent five hundred dollars on that on on the. the system. We oh. spent the exact same amount of money today than we did with mm-hmm. the original Xbox One mm-hmm. back then. Of course, that doesn't equal out in inflation, but who cares? I'll take it. Mm-hmm. Wow, what a terrible piece of hardware back then. And it was weak back then too, which was which is funny. I remember when they came out, the specs were not impressive. As the PC people love telling me the P- that it was not impressive. Well, compared to PC, oh my God. Well, it's still, still though, like even compared with, like, with the Series X now, which of course this is a different time, but mm-hmm. the Series X now is at least comparable to a PC. If you want to get anywhere close to 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 the, as far as I understand, mm-hmm. you're spending at least a thousand dollars, easy sure. to get anywhere near how strong this Series X is. Yep. And then you don't have all the features. That's beside the point. How interesting that they're bringing, they're letting you play this new games on your old system. I, I mean, 
essentially for free, $10 a month. That's kind of nuts. Do you think this... How long do you think they keep this up for? It, like, just for having an Xbox One... I mean, this is kind of like the best of both worlds, right? Like, the, I, feel like I don't. They're gonna, keep do, they're gonna keep going until mm. they see numbers drop on subscriptions to them. Be like, oh, we're not seeing as many people like this year. We have maybe um, a certain amount, a certain percentage that nobody's. I was like, oh, okay, let's ramp it up. Let's let's change it up a little bit. Let's do something to bring people back. I want to bring up the fact that we had that episode a few where we were just arguing about how we were upset God of War and Horizon weren't exclusives. Mm-hmm. This is an incredible way of saying we're going to make Series X exclusives. We're going to make them next gen. And also, we're still going to let you be able to play it utilizing our servers. This is like literally the best of both worlds for me where, hey, you got an old system. Well, we're not going to make it for your old system, but you have good internet, good Wi-Fi, or if you have an Ethernet cable hooked up, you're going to be able to play it anyways through our servers. They're much stronger now, and they're going to be able to play these games versus... Trying to make the game natively run on that system. God, I mean, I can't remember. Did they say Halo Infinite is going to run on Xbox One? Yeah, pretty sure. Did they? Okay. Jesus, is that game launching for Xbox One? That's what I was trying to think. Oh my god! God, is this getting is this game going to be able to run on Xbox One? Like Black Ops, Black Ops Three. It's like I didn't know. It's like I feel like the Series X compared to the One is such a big jump. I feel like it's like. 360 to xbox one so i was like they, i don't know like uh, like what game like okay starfield i'm it's just crazy to me that it, like people are people going to be able to enjoy them like is it gonna be, hopefully they can stream i guess well it says it will launch on xbox one oh, jesus so i will be very interested to see what that game looks like on an xbox one very interested Instead of Master Chief, they see a fucking little toy soldier. <laughs> it looks, yeah, it looks like Toy Story. He's like, yeah, it's, it's unturned. I don't know if you have ever seen that game. It's like, it's it kind of is like a zombie Minecraft type of thing. Okay, but everybody's blocky. That's how you see him. I'm thinking of Toy Soldiers. They're remaking this, uh, remastering oh. it. I loved Toy Soldiers. It's a, a, a an old school 360 arcade game. Mm-hmm. They're remaking. I can't wait for that game to come out. This is a quick one, but Xbox is bringing back the incredibly popular controller to, to design service called Xbox Design Labs. For those unaware, this service is where you design an Xbox controller with a large array of colors, choices of different textures for grips. You can even laser engrave them. Now, if you have never tried this, they are expensive, but you can just go make them for fun. I, I, that's one of my favorite parts of this. Just go, yeah, just go have some fun. Make one. I've made so many of these controllers, and I'm definitely going to now. Alex, I want to challenge you. Mm. Okay, this is going to be a fun thing we're going to bring to the next episode of the mm-hmm. uh, incredible podcast we do together. Okay, I want you to make one controller. Okay, and we'll showcase it. It'll be like show and tell. Okay, next week. Okay, I've made a couple yeah. and I just never showed you them. Ooh, yeah, yeah. If you want, bring one to three. Let's keep it one to three, so the segment's okay. not too long. I'll make probably one, maybe, maybe. Mm. Gotcha. Alex, are you ready for a super long one? Oh god, here we go. All right, here we go. Let's stretch. Everyone, get up. Stretch for a little bit. Achievers, dude, I'm so sore. Is achievers park your car for a second? Get out. Stretch for. This is gonna be a long one. It's gonna be a long one. Okay. What if they're in the? Right? What if they're in the highway? I mean, they got the side right. <laughs> I don't know how highways work. There's a little. There's some grass. Pull up. Pull up to the grass. Just look around. There ain't no cops. You're fine. Digging that nitro rifle shirt, by the way. Oh, thank you, thank you. I love this shirt. It's so yeah, minimalism. I, to, I like I'm, it. I meant to get one too, man. Uh, yeah, he he was on. It was a very limited when they released mm-hmm. it. Um, uh, when Andy Cortez made the shirt. Yeah. All right, here we go. Surprise, surprise. Not surprised though. Housemark is being acquired by PlayStation. Um, I want to read a statement given by the one, the only Jim Ryan. <laughs> Quote: Housemark has flexed its creative palette on a wide range of PlayStation games over the years that have continually showcased the power of our hardware. The addition of Housemark to PlayStation 2 is Ritter 8's our commitment to elevating the best development teams in the industry and delivering new experiences that can only be found on the PlayStation platform. Now, no terms or dollar signs were given about Housemark deal, so we don't know how much. We don't know what the deal even looks like, but as far as we know, they're not going in and, like, upending it like the higher ups or the executives there or any creative directors it seems like they're leaving everything alone and now they just are owned 
Housemark's first game was in 1993 with Stardust for the Atari Amiga and MS DOS. MS DOS for short. Partnership with Sony started with Super Stardust HD for the PS3 in 2007, and they reached critical status of games like Dead Nation in 2010, and they're, of course, mega popular launch title for the PS4 Rezogun in 2013. They also have, of course, the recent hint on their hands with Returnal on PS5. Now, there's, there's a part two to the story. I don't want to go to it yet, Alex. First off, what are your thoughts about this? Now, this, like I said at the beginning... Not too surprising. Housemark has really only made games for PlayStation for yeah, the most part for the latter, for, I mean, almost over a decade. They did make Next Machina available on Xbox One, I believe. Uh, but I think that's the last time they've released a multi platform title, which was. It's so surprising that they're just now buying the, the studio. It, it's, a, it's very much like an Insomniac thing where mm-hmm. it took you guys a while to buy this incredible team. And like, were you debating on it? Like, uh, well, I think PlayStation just likes n- <sighs> being secretive. Uh, well, no, uh, yes and no. I, I like. The, I think they like knowing the cow before they buy it. I don't know. This is a weird metaphor, <laughs> but but I think they like knowing who they're buying because I feel like they have to be very selective. Now, as far as I understand, there's rumors that they're going around and they're writing checks. Apparently. Um, that's uh, yeah, at PlayStation, we're available. The Easy Achievers is available to be purchased, just so you know. But aside from that, they are apparently walking around, cashing checks, putting them out. I mean, of course, now with Deviation Games, they had this weird, you know, fire, you know, uh, what's it called? I think it was Firewalk Studios. They, they had a bunch of Haven, that's right. Haven was the other one. They're making deals with these uh, smaller devs to make these things, they're acquiring studios. I feel like they're definitely trying to compete for one news because it's all it's it's been Xbox dominated for quite a while now, especially with their very successful E3. They've been talked about for over a year about Bethesda. Like we've been talking about the Bethesda deal for what? In, I, I mean, a year, right, Alex? I, I want to say it's been about a year. Yeah, it was everyone's a everyone's asking if Starfield's exclusive, Skyrim's exclusive. Like we're all, we're always asking, not Skyrim, you know, I'll just go six, whatever. That's always been the question. So maybe this is their chance of like trying to get back to the news. What do you think? Hmm. I I'm just wondering what they have in store for them. Like why? What? Like if. Hmm. Why buy them now mm-hmm. and not just leave it be? So like. Do play does PlayStation not want them to create multi platform titles now? Like- yeah, maybe they wanted to lock them down. I see what you're saying here. You're kind of grasping at what I'm thinking too. Th- like they why, were getting like the why? milk for free, so yeah. why buy the cow? Which is a great mm-hmm. metaphor that I love. Why why do that? Maybe they need to make sure, like, hey, we need to start building studios mm-hmm. because like these because we're IP in store, Eternal Two, maybe like yeah. Now they might be looking at xbox and like they're about to have a game a quarter uh, every physical quarter they're going to probably have a major triple a if not double a game maybe they are looking at that like we have to go after these studios now before they either a get more expensive because if if there's a buyer's market the prices are going to go up second xbox keeps buying all the studios (laughs) yeah yeah they do they are they're probably trying to buy more i wouldn't be surprised if we get a a studio acquisition in about a couple months i i'm pretty confident by the end of this year they're going to say they bought someone and i could see them trying to buy remedy but that's beside the point um maybe that's why and that leads me into this one um maybe even more interesting what i just said about the acquisition Something very peculiar happened, and a couple eagle eyes on Twitter noticed this. The day this was announced, so the Housemark acquisition, PlayStation Japan released a picture very similar to the Housemarks. The difference? It read, Welcome to the Family, and the Blue Point Studios logo on it. Mm-hmm. Now, Sony did deny this was real. They said, uh, they, they basically said, Hey, this isn't real. We didn't buy Blue Point. But one must ask themselves, why did they have a professional asset from a professional branch of their studios? This is PlayStation Japan, where they're, where they're located, right? Mm. Sony is a Japanese company. They had a pre-made asset ready to announce Bluepoint. I think 
I think the writing's been on the wall that Blue Points were getting purchased by PlayStation before this. I think I think that's one of the easiest things you probably could have called. Oh, How sure. Smart and Blue Point were probably going to be bought by yeah. PlayStation at some point. But now, Alex, I feel like it's a hundred percent. What do you think? Do you agree? Disagree? No, yeah, for it, like I feel like it was one of those type of things where it kind of got like pushed in and like accidentally sent out there and it, and still a place is just like oh shit no no we're not buying it no you imagine the social media manager behind that like uh, uh, delete, delete. I, have a, I have a feeling in a couple months we'll probably see that blue point thing i wouldn't be surprised if we see it in about a month or two and this we'll this i think we'll i think see we'll see that in that playstation uh event that they're Ooh, hinting. alex we're like this i was just about to say that we're like this i was just about to say I think we're gonna get PSX, the. PSX maybe. They're not gonna do PSX. You don't think so? If it's if it's PSX, it's not PSX. If you understand what I'm saying, if they call something PlayStation Experience, it is not PSX well, as we think it? of. Like, it's like this is the new PSX, like, like how they they are like how they like you know they've been gone for a while. Like mm-hmm. this is this is the new this is this is like what we are now. Right. I I see what you're saying. I I agree that if PlayStation Experience come back. It will be PlayStation Experience in nothing but name. Mm-hmm. I don't think it will yeah. be anything what we think of. They're not going to have Greg Miller out there doing some panel talking to Shuhei Yoshida about how much they Most like trophies. There, <laughs> I don't think. I actually don't think they. I don't think they will have any influences there. I don't think that's a. I don't think that's Sony anymore. Yeah. I think Sony is business suit. Have Mark Cerny talking you got Mark. <laughs> you got Mark Cerny talking about how this SSD is going to be great. And it's going to be completely possible to port PS5 games to PS4 super easily. Yeah, remember remember when you had that, Jock? Oh, I don't either. I don't either. Anyways. With the silhouette people. Uh, yeah, that was... <laughs> I forgot about that. God, that was cardboard, weird. Cardboard people. But anyways, um, if, if it does come back, and they are going to have... I am 100% positive in this. They're going to have a event oh. before the end of fall easily that and that's almost too easy to say i will say they'll probably have an event before the end of september probably before september. the end of august i was thinking september my original um uh when we were doing the e3 podcast i believe my original estimate was the second week of july mm-hmm. i feel like they wouldn't have announced this acquisition if it was so i think it's going to be in august i think it's going to be probably <laughs> i think it's going to probably be near the end of august yeah is what i'm thinking yeah, I'm thinking sometime, some maybe midway September somewhere around there. Medium Molecule made a game in Dreams, and now they want their community to finish it. Dreams, the very unique game, if you could call it that, I guess, is uh, changing, and they announced their newly launched game called Mega Penguin Rehatched, uh, which is, if you remember this, this is what they showed off in the 2018 tech demo for the game. So. You remember that long, long ago tech demo they showed off that this was technically what they showed off this kind of giant man looking penguin with very buff arms. <laughs> they have made three levels and they have asked community to go ahead and finish it. The game is based on this mega penguin. He has crash landed and needs to find his way home. Oh, yeah, Alex, this is quite strange. Um, to finish it out, Media Molecule formed by X Line head devs back in 2005. Partnered with Sony to make Little Big Planet, which launched in 2008. So critical claim they went off to make two sequels of that game, and in February 2020 released Dreams, a game of making games, where the community makes levels and full games inside of Dreams. The last title before Dreams was 2013's Tearaway. Now, what is up with this? What, so I think it's obvious that they're going to try and port it to PS5 to try and make this a thing. Alex, so Media, Molecule, so Media Molecule started just messing around and playing, making a game in Dreams. Yes, and now they and have now asked the community one. to finish the game. They have oh, made three levels, the and they're like, "Hey, community, it. you know, as as a dream, like let's make this yeah. game kind of together with the community." So if it sells, does that mean those people are gonna get you know? Incentives? I don't think they're literally making a game. It's just something you play in Dreams. Now that's a very interesting thing, and I think that's the actual problem mm-hmm. with Dreams. There is no financial incentive, so no one, you know, there, there, there is only so much time you will devote to this. It is just for L, you know, it's just for likes and stuff. Or, I mean, you can make something and show off to a potential employer one day, maybe, but 
if there's no financial incentive, you're not going to have a huge player base that are going to come and try and make games. I, I just, I don't think, and they keep trying to make this a thing. And Alex, I, I just, to not, to try not to sound too mean, I feel like Media Monocle is just wasting their incredible talent. I mean, they made Little Big Planet. That was mm-hmm. PlayStation's mascot for a, probably a decade almost. Almost a decade, I think. I mean, right? Yeah, since about 2015, I'd say they launched Little Big Planet in 2008. Yeah. I'd say that thing was like on the, like their commercials as like a main little mascot boy, like Crash Bandicoot, for almost a decade. And they're making yeah. dreams still. Yeah, they, haven't, they haven't done anything since yeah. like that. I, I I miss them. I wish I wish they were able to make something else. Maybe they are. Maybe there's a second team and there's one people just you know focusing on dreams. But my God, yeah, please. I I I, I don't know. I don't. I, Alex, do you care about dreams? Am I being too harsh? I've only played the demo. Okay, so, so, I've never so really you're not done. interested either. Nah, I okay. think it's cool. I mean, a hey, good, hey, cool to the people. Yeah, who I, know how to do that shit because, like, I saw that Dead Space like remake thing, and I was that like, was cool. Hey, that that looks cool. That was cool. Was Interesting, like, you bring that up that. for a later story. Wink, wink, mm-hmm. audience. Yeah, I, I again, I, I never want to come across as like I am shitting on this game. This game is incredible for what it is, but like, if you don't have, if you didn't, if it didn't work out. Don't stick with it unless you know you can fix it. I mean, I think I think someone saw, like, I think they have a, a way of telling how many people are playing the game at any moment, similar to, like, Halo 3 back in the day. Yeah. I think they were at, like, a couple thousand people, like, like two or three months after launch. Like, oh, my God. Like, that's terrible. So, yeah. I don't know. I hope they, I hope if they, if, if they are sticking with it, they figure it out. Similar to, like, a Sea of Thieves situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, this morning as of recording, I believe, I believe it was this morning, I might be wrong, Herman Holst announced that they have acquired Nix's software. They're joining their PlayStation Studio family. Now, what is Nix's software, you might ask? Well, don't worry, everyone on Twitter that morning asked them themselves, and I'm sure their Wikipedia showed a lot of numbers. They are a PC porting studio. They have only really worked with Square Enix in the past. So, if you are a fan of those big old ports coming to PC from Sony, as in Days Gone, um, the upcoming Uncharted 4 one, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, I am sure this is now going to be the main studio focusing on PC ports. So, get excited. Alex. Mm. You don't care about this, right? Like, PC ports? Nah. Me, me either. I, I just wanted to throw it to you, just in case you had something to comment. But yeah, I, I have, I don't, this is... Yeah, I mean, I got my system. I mean, I play I play PC every once in a while, but like... Yeah. yeah. And also, the, the, the PC ports are made specifically of Sony games that... That we have, we, that we have meant to already have played on a PlayStation, if you're interested. So like, you know, it's only meant for like, it's, it's, it's for like, completely wringing the like, the, the washcloth of like, all of the water to make sure you get all of the money possible in this. Mm. I don't know if you saw this. Ghost of Tsushima's back in there. They're making a director's cut. Mm-hmm. Coming to PS5 and PS4 consoles August 20th. This is all from um, uh, their PlayStation blog right here. If you're a history buff, you may know that in addition to Tsushima, the neighboring island of Liki? Iki. Iki, thank you. Was also evaded during the time period. Today, we're, not, we're excited to reveal a whole new chapter in Jin's journey. And coming is coming and will take place on Iki. In this new story, Jin travels to the island to investigate rumors of a Mongol presence, but soon he finds himself caught in the events with deeply personal stakes that will force him to relive some traumatic moments from his past. We'll have more to share with the story of Vicky soon, but today we can confirm that beyond a whole new story, the new island, new content, brand new environments to explore, new armor for Jin as well as source, new mini games, new techniques, new enemy types, and much more. There are even new animals to pet. There's a little monkey. Don't know if you saw that. A little monkey you can pet. You can, it looks like you maybe maybe you can give him a cracker or something. I don't know. A cracker. On both platforms, Darkest Cut will also offer new trophies to unlock with the new icky content. Alex, this is very exciting. Now, they did say yeah, um, you yeah. can port your saves, I believe. So that means okay. free platinum again. Have Pretty sure. Seen, have you seen the prices? Alex, correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm remembering correctly. If you have the PS4 version, mm-hmm. you can upgrade to the PS5 version for $30. Is that correct? 
I feel like that's correct. Thought, I don't remember. I think maybe I thought it was less. Let me see. Let's do a quick. Yeah, you you check. I'm gonna talk with the audience. Now, this director cut's got me excited. One, I get to go back to Ghost Shima and look how pretty it is. Two, I get to go to a new island and play new missions, which is a reason I need to come back and I get to see how pretty the game is. Three, yeah, we finally, and we had finally came back to it because yeah, I had stopped. Yeah, we almost we were almost gone from the game for almost a year, I think. Almost. Not really almost a year. Close to a year. And fell in love with the game. Platinumed it. So, I mean, that's a fantastic game. And I cannot wait for this coming out now. What really excites me is, of course, I love grabbing the armor. I love getting the good charms. So I'm hoping the armor looks really cool. Also, the horse. Come on. I love that horse. No spoilers for the game, but I'm very connected to the horse. So I got I got stuff right here for the prices. Go ahead, so, please. And from Engadget, it says, "Unfortunately, you won't get a free upgrade to the director's cut on either console." Interesting. Current, current Ghost of Tsushima owners can upgrade to the PS4 director's cut for twenty dollars. You can then upgrade again to the PS5 version for another ten dollars. Alternatively, you can pay thirty dollars to upgrade straight from the original game to the PS5 director's cut. So you were correct, thirty dollars. For thirty dollars, yes. Alex. New newcomers can buy Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut for 60 on PS4 and 70 on PS5. What do you think of this? So this is kind of the... F I mean... I mean, This is kind of the first upgrade we're... F we're th yeah, I mean, this is kind of the first time we're paying for kind of an upgrade, right? I mean, Call of like Duty, we kind of did. It was like $10, sort of, not really. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, like... This is kind of the first thing where, like, hey, um, it's gonna be thirty bucks. So yeah, so, pay it if you want it. So meaning, this game. I mean, when the Ghost of Tsushima, how much was it when we got a sixty? Uh, yes, it was sixty dollars when it came out. And so we're paying an extra thirty now for director's cut. So we're paying. So it's technically a ninety dollar game. Yeah, if you want to think about it that way. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that's no I, I fair, mean, but I see what you're saying. Yeah. It, I mean, we, yes, we are spending 90 bucks on it. I don't know. I see what you're saying. I don't know if it's... Hmm, I don't want to say that it's not worth $30, but at the same time, I'm like... It, uh, it, it, we get in this weird scenario. First off, DLC is probably overpriced. If yeah. we're really thinking about this, we're paying for half the game's content in a, in a, in a DLC. So, you know, it gets in the gray area of like... Like is is this DLC worth half of the game? Now it depends. Probably on how not. Upgrade this PS5 version is because if it's just literally just uh, it's ray tracing, I mean, it, then it, it makes no difference. If it if it gives me the option of doing, because hmm. the game you can play on your PS5 and it was already at sixty frames, right? Already at sixty frames. Yeah. So what is the difference? They're going to add... Well, I think they had much more on there. I just did not add it because I didn't think we would get into it. But I, I'm glad we are now because I feel like this is a good conversation oh, here happening. here we go. Uh, oh, go ahead. You already thing. got it. Yeah, on the same thing. The PS5 version will have few exclusive features. Cutscenes will not support lip sync for Japanese voice actors. I saw this. The developers will be able to add this feature by harnessing the PS5's real-time rendering ability for cinematics. There will be haptic feedback and adaptive trigger support for DualSense controller along with 3D audio, faster load times, resolution up to 4K, and a target frame rate of 60 FPS. Which, wasn't it already 60 FPS? That's, that's what I'm confused about with that one. Yeah, see so what you're saying. Is, uh, 4K resolution options and frame rates targeting 4K 60. 60 with the, when you get to play it on PS5? I don't think it was 4K. I think you got to pick. I think uh, No, that doesn't sound right either. I'll be honest, I don't know. I remember there was a PS5 upgrade mm -hmm. for free that did something. Yeah. Just don't remember what it is. Uh, it, not important. Anyways, <laughs> if, uh, the uh, question of the price. Mm -hmm. Would you pay thirty bucks for this? Now you don't I'm know much about the to, island. To be fair, I don't know how much. But I don't know how big it is. It could literally be half of Tsushima. So thirty bucks. I mean, I mean, yeah, I guess it is. Oh, bucks, it's yeah. definitely not half of the game. I doubt that. I think it's maybe a third. Maybe. I mean, half. Not half of the game. Oh, half of the, like the size. I'm saying half of the map size. Yeah, map size is what I'm asking about. I could see it being a third. It's not half. It's not half mm -hmm. as big. I don't think. 
Maybe it is. I don't know. I would. It's also getting new facts. legend content, by the way, which we don't care about. But you know, that's important to add to. I, w- I would see me more comfortable at twenty, but thirty. I mean, I'm still gonna do it. So I, twenty I would... would be a must. Like, no questions asked. Thirty is yeah. the one where I'm like, okay, and you know, let's. I would I would preface before saying like okay well let's think about it now instead of being like immediately buy it so yeah. I I don't at the end of the day I'm buying it so yeah you know. and and me and Alex are in a different situation than the achievers are we have everything so. <laughs> but still it's interesting to talk about oh Jesus Alex this oh, is- I'm, oh. Um, sorry no 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 go on, please am, please I remember I. I remember now. Uh, the Tsushima PS4 to PS5. It will, you were correct. You can uh, either 4K at 30 or uh, and then 60 and then for the switchy. other one. That's and, right. Yeah, it was like 60. Okay. I don't know if it was 1080 or 1440, but it was just yeah. You you lose resolution. It was like and to get the 60 frames. Okay, and I think now they're saying they're gonna try and go 4K for 4K 60. 60. Okay. Yes. All right. Cool. Trying. I mean, hopefully. Yeah, I know, right? Trying like, uh, maybe, maybe try real hard, please. <laughs> I mean, I'm paying an extra thirty dollars. <laughs> Alex, strap in. What did you call me? I uh, what? No, I said strap in. Oh, jeez. Oh, okay. oh God, what did you think? I uh, anyways, <laughs> Electronics Arts has a big old rumor settling around. I guess you could say it's in space. Maybe it's alive. Maybe it's dead. Maybe it's dead space. Co-developer of Star Wars Battlefront 2, <laughs> Motive, is apparently working on a new Dead Space game. I'm going to put Dead Space new in quotes here. Mm-hmm. This is reported on by GameSpeed. They confirm with a bunch of people they've talked to that there is a fully remastered version of the first Dead Space game currently being made by Motive. It is a remake of the franchise and is a Resident Evil 2-like remake where it's like completely new assets game looks amazing etc etc we we did it we talked it into it we we made we enforced ea <laughs> to do this we forced Same them thank god ea is listening to us their ea, EA is fine the ea is doing the mirror's edge catalyst where it's like you wanted it here it is you better buy it you know what i mean it's kind of like that it's like if you, you wanted it you better buy it now now I am incredibly excited for this. This is, of course, going to be announced at EA Play. Uh, this was reported on previously, but now this is like full on. Like we have people telling us this is true. It's true. Get ready, Dead Space remake. Get hype. Mm-hmm. Do you care? Oh, for sure, dude. Yeah, you do. Yes, you do. Oh my god, dude! I can't I wait for this. I almost replayed the games two weeks ago, and I'm like, and it was like right around E3, and I was like. <sighs> I feel like they're going to announce something about Dead Space soon. Yeah. And I don't want to play it now and then it come out this year. Mm-hmm. I don't know if, if it'll come out this year, but I don't want it to be like, oh, how do I, if I just played them, then I'm not going to want to play the remaster. So I'm going to wait. And then, here we go. Um, a part of the thing was um, apparently EA has completely changed their mindset on single player games and changed their mind mm-hmm. is uh, it's apparently is a mixture of Resident Evil, the way Star Wars, Jedi Fallen Order sold, and a bunch of other stuff. But. I guess they're, they saw Battlefront. They're like, never again. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I'm sure their Battlefront 2 thing didn't work out well. So they're like, maybe we just focus on some single player aspects. Maybe we don't put multiplayer into everything. But incredibly excited for this. There's not much other than it's a rumor and it's happening. Um, cool. It's a, it's a positive rumor. <laughs> yeah, positive rumor. Yeah. This is more of a you should go read. I think it brings up a great question that me that bad when you have to say that. <laughs> uh, what it's called is "Hello Kotaku, It's Me, Your New Editor in Chief." This is by Patricia Hernandez. Now, this is a great read. I read through all of this. Fantastic. I don't normally read Kotaku because uh, <clears throat> I just didn't find that they had the the stuff I need. I usually went to IGN, other side, you know, GameSpot occasionally, GameSpeed occasionally. Mm. Game industry up is that from that not important. They bring up a bunch of great points with where the industry is at right now, where gaming coverage as a whole is at right now, and just a bunch of other stuff. You should go read it; it's fantastic. 
Um, what I want to bring up to a question with you, Alex, I want to discuss very quickly. First off, Alex, do you con- how do you consume your games media right now? Now, we're in a unique position. We have a podcast. We generally talk it out and we discuss the news here. Do you actively go to a website right now? If so, what is it? Sometimes, uh, like I can, not a Kate, not as much as I'm probably as you do, but mm-hmm. like uh, when I get the time, yeah, I go on there. Okay, and most likely I just use IGN or Twitter. Okay, why is that the case? Are you too busy? Do you have no interest? Do you not like these sites? Do you have I, a reason at all? I just sometimes I when I remember to do it, I'm like, oh yeah, I should see what's if there's anything new. Mm-hmm. And then I do it, but I don't work, go out of my way to look for stuff. Is there something that they could do to change that? Basically, what I'm getting at here is they bring up good points of where there are specific factors that they don't like on the industry of where they're using certain tactics to get you to click longer and get the um, essentially what they use for advertisement dollars. They get you to click on things, look at stuff. They could tell like how long you've looked at stuff and stuff like that. Mm. It's called um, it's called a. Uh, I'm blanking on the name, but it's 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 a farming technique mm-hmm. to farm people to keep clicking through stuff to like farm their clicks for money. Yeah. Rich side point: Is there something that they could do to fix you getting on there longer? Is there is there a certain aspect you don't like about games media right now? I. No, because that's more. It's probably more of a me problem, not okay. them. Okay. Uh, I mean, from what I've seen, I mean, they have they could, uh, any all the media's. I mean, bringing out as much content as they can. So mm-hmm. I think it's just probably a personal thing. Mm. Okay, interesting. What about you? I consume their media as a part of my lifestyle, and not as a choice. I guess is mm, that's maybe not what I mean. Essentially, what I mean is. I'm in consuming you're, you're generally doing it. You're generally doing it just like as a part of your day. Yes. I'm generally doing it as part of my day. So I know what I should cover on this show so mm-hmm. I can talk with the achievers and Alex through the news. I think over the years, IGN and, and, and sites like that, even though IGN, I think is the, is probably the best news site right now. Mm-hmm. One of them is there has been a, what seems like, reluctance to observe from further hmm, a reluctance to observe the overall situation of games media rather than looking at a narrow lens of what they see right in front of them i won't go into too many specifics because it's way too long right now and i don't think it's very interesting for me to talk about this but essentially i would like a games media that is first off knows what's going on around them, has co- complete context with situations, and is more news-driven versus... Hmm, news-driven versus... I don't want to sound like a dick here. I want, I, want them to, I want them to report on news and not what they think they should be reporting on. Hmm. I think I think everyone here knows what I'm talking about here, but I want them to see news, report it as news, and then have an op-ed versus having this whole thing where they're trying to sway you in their editorial. And this is actually what um, the new editor-in-chief goes into. Mm-hmm. Interesting times ahead with the games, I think. Yeah. Remedy Entertainment finds a co-publishing and development agreement with 505 Games for a multiplayer spin-off game for Control. There isn't much to talk about this. I took a bunch of stuff out for context, but essentially that is what the story is. Remedy sat down with 505 Games. They have agreed to share know-how is what they've said, which I, I guess I'm like, okay, whatever. But they are co-publishing and developing a four-player cooperative a PVE game codenamed Condor, a spinoff of Control. It's using Remedy's um, Northlight engine and the tools inside of it, of course. It's going to be available on PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X, X and S. Hmm. And it's a bunch of... So it's next-gen it, exclusive. Yeah, it's next-gen exclusive, and it's being assumably made now, as, as, as discussing. Uh, everything else is a bunch of executive talk. It's 
it's a bunch of fluff and, not, and no substance. So, Alex, uh, I, if you ask me what do you want out of control, I do not want this. Yeah. But it could be something fun, maybe. What do you think? I, I could care. I when As soon as yeah. I read this, I went... There's so many four-player PvE games. <laughs> right I'm like, there's so many. There's already like three on top of my head that I want to play that are not even out yet. And I'm like, just give me a minute. I assume one. Aliens, Fire Team, and Back for Blood are yes. just two, and then Redfall three, and yeah, then there you go. I mean, that's just three. That's the three I'm thinking of. Yeah. So like, it's 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 like, as soon as I read this, I literally went, <sighs> I, I now Remedy is gonna be. They're a great oh, team. Them. Now they're going to be making a four-player PVE game I don't care about. <laughs> and maybe it's going to be good, but I want Control 2. I mean... Alan Wake 2. I mean, uh, how many people have four, pl- have four people to play with nowadays? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, yeah, that's another thing, too. But I am I don't want this, but maybe it's going to be good. But this is literally the last thing I want to hear. I want single-player. Control is awesome. I want that again. But, Literally, just give me Alan Wake 2 if forget this game. Uh, another weird one. Konami and Blooper Team announce a strategic partnership deal. This is a surprising one for me. I don't know about you, Achievers, but Konami and Blooper Team are now working together. This partnership is defined as an exchange of, quote, know-how. By the way, this is what I meant earlier. I did not. I misspoke. I did not mean for control. I meant for this. Um, and the idea is for you to strengthen each other's development skills. That's literally it. It was kind of like a little thing, and all it said was we're partnering together. The rumors are it's a Silent Hill thing. Mm. The rumors did not specifically say it was a Silent Hill game. It was a Silent Hill related game. Interesting. If you don't know who Konami is, I would cry, but if you don't need a quick refresher, they have a very long history, starting with, of course, Castlevania, leading into, of, of course, Metal Gear, games like Silent Hill and Contra are their huge titles, and then they are popular with the young kids, Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card video games on mobile. <laughs> and they made one of the best games ever, Suikoden. You know, aside from, yeah, aside from the point. Suikoden 1, 2, and 5. Amazing, amazing game games. Finds a way to bring this game amazing game. Life. Casually saying, just amazing game. Uh, Alex, there's not much here. Do you, ha- do you want to bring up anything? Uh, first off, it, I think, I think on uh, top of everything, what's even more interesting... It's not even that this is interesting. It's interesting that Konami themselves are doing anything. Yeah, it's definitely like out of the blue. Right? I mean, they haven't done something really since Metal Gear Survive, and then they made that kind of Contra spin-off game, which looked terrible. Well, they haven't done anything since well, like since they've split with Kojima, right? So they split the with whole... Kojima with Metal Gear Solid yeah. 5, right? Yep. And then they had Metal Gear Survive, which no one bought. No. And then they, uh, I believe, just published. I don't think they developed the con- Contra game that came out yeah. two years ago or something like that. It's terrible. It looked, it looked terrible, anyways. <laughs> um, but yeah, that that's I, I I think we're I think we're slowly seeing Konami slowly come back into video games. I yeah. do not think they're interested in developing. I think they're gonna be so publishing their stuff out to people and they're like hey do you want this you want to make a castlevania game all right here's a check go make a game we are going to take 30 percent of your profits or whatever i don't know yeah i don't know but i want to see konami come back i i want metal gear i want castlevania back which i think metal gear is the blue point game but side mm-hmm. point i want castlevania back sweet it in for the love of god do God, something you, with that game you will have a, oh I, I feel like you just I plop all of my blood vessels in my eyeballs, and it'd just be a red mess. My phone would literally go off all day. It happened. It all it say it was just a sweet good and sweet good. Sweet good. Sweet good. Uh, I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna, I'm gonna block you. Yeah, you remember that old movie, Eddie Murphy, Norbit? Is that uh, no? I was about to say that's not the one where the no, that's not. I, I get the these two confused. He's like the nerdy guy, and he's and he's with the big, uh, with the big uh, heavy set woman, but it's both him. Oh, that, that yeah, yeah, yeah. I was about to say that one board game where the board game takes them to space. That's Zathura. Oh, how'd that's you know that? Dif- that's a whole different game, a I, horror movie. I know, but I, I was going to say that, and I was like, I know it's wrong, but I think you're meaning this. But I knew it was wrong. Yeah, no, no, that's Zathura. That's actually a pretty good, pretty good movie. 
Um, but no, like it's like there's a scene and he's in the bed in the in the uh, in the bed in the shower and he's like Tuesday, 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 because he's like something's coming up on Tuesday and you just hear her in the background. You say Tuesday one more time, you ain't gonna see no Wednesday. I'm like, man, you say sweet it one more time, you ain't gonna see it. <laughs> I I have no idea what just happened, but I know there's some achiever like ah oh, yes this movie. <laughs> I know there's one out there. Uh, Spyro and Crash are gonna get an animated series on Apple TV Plus. Oh my god, why? I don't care about this. This was reported by Video Games Chronicle. I picked it up just to give it to you guys. Read the full story over there. Me and Alex are not Crash or Spyro. Big people. It would be a lot people. funner if there was a crossover with them. Like Ratchet and Clank, they just had dimension. Alex, but... did you not play the hit game Skylanders? They already had a crossover. I mean, they had a show with it too, didn't they? I think they tried and very they much tried. failed. I think. Yeah. Okay. I think they really tried and they were like, "Oh, this that's isn't how, working." That's how, that's how much it was impacted by life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, good lord. Ugh. Uh, not much to say. I, I, I think it was kind of disputed if these were even real. So mm. kind of take it with a grain of salt. I should have put this in rumor roundup. It seems substantiate enough, so I believe it. But I, I also, I obviously, I obviously also don't care that much. So maybe that's sure they, that's influencing it a little bit. But I'm sure the kids will. Yeah, yeah, the kids will. A couple Elden Ring details. This is a quick one. I just want to quickly put this in here. Create your own character, of course, with all Dark Souls games. Create your own character. Um, this is going to be FromSoft's biggest game ever. Uh, this has an interconnected, seamless open world. There's going to be a day and night cycle with a dynamic weather system. NPC, NPCs in the world can help or hurt you. Uh, just like, of course, Dark Souls games. Yeah. There will be smart delivery on Series X or a free upgrade on PS5. That was it. That's all we know about that. Wait a minute. What? What? So, what is it? So it's a smart delivery. Does that mean it's going to be uh, an, a Series X version? Or is it just an upgrade, or is it like a like a smart delivery? Means whatever when you buy it on a system, it gives okay, you the version you need. Okay, okay, cool. Just so, uh, for instance, free. if you're on a PlayStation Five, you can accidentally buy the PS4 version. Where on Xbox, you cannot do that. You will always get the version made yeah. for your system. I just want to make sure because I forgot for a second. I'm like, am I not going to get the the best Series X version, and PS5 is getting a free? ps5 version i'm like that's how i was confused but i forgot smart delivery does that thing where it just upgrades this the to, to make it match the system gt online is being closed this december on xbox series xbox 360 not series oh, 360 you know many people are mad but xbox that. 360 and ps3 it will be pulled in two phases. GT Online will be pulled in two phases. The first phase on se September 16, 2021. PS3 and Xbox 360 version shark cards will stop being sold. On December 16th, the service for GT Online will be shut down. And this will, of course, bring an end to Rockstar's social club, whatever that means. Oh my god, I remember that. That was horrible. Oh, uh, Alex, um... I uh, I I think we can finally say the 360 and PS3 are finally are done, right? Yeah, I think that was, I think that was the only big thing that was keeping them alive is a, a GTA Online and probably no, that was it. <laughs> and and probably no, that was it. That, that was it. yeah. I mean, that was look. I know a lot of people that still play the game. Oh, for sure, dude. So. And very interesting that has to tell you years. like they're like okay yeah turn off it's not worth having this thing anymore so mm. i get, i wonder how many and and just for context everyone this is a game that launched september 17th on uh, 2013 for 316 ps3 it it was then released again on xbox one and ps4 november 18th 2014 it will now be launching on series x and ps5 november 11th 2021 I mean, GTA six apparently will be coming out twenty twenty five. Is what they said. I don't believe. I don't believe it. I don't either, believe. But we won't actually. Excuse me. We won't see it. <laughs> yeah. Till then. Um, I was trying to find really quickly. Four um, years. I was the game was oh, Jesus. Christ. They've sold so many copies of this. I was trying to oh. see really quick if I could find when the online service came on. It was a couple months after the original launch of the game. I know that. Uh, but it is not important. It's fine. Um, 
yeah, it's not important. Yeah, Grand Theft Auto V is closing down servers, 360 PS3. Get prepared emotionally for that. You talking about, you're looking for a GTA Online launch date? Yes. October 1st, 2013. Thank you. Shortly after 2013, you were able to do that. And then, Why did it take you so long to find that? Uh, because I was on this uh, stupid site. I shouldn't have clicked it. I knew I shouldn't I have. And they gave me no information. I literally just typed that in on Google and literally in big, bold letters, it says October 1st, 2013. You see how it treats me. All right. I clicked on a site. I trusted them. I, I failed. I failed. Okay. You mean they failed because they stirred you wrong? Coming soon to Xbox Game Pass. A lot of games. Oh my Let's God, start. So many games. <laughs> let's start. <laughs> so many games. All right, let's go. Okay. Iron Harvest, June 24th. Iron Harvest is a real-time strategy game set in an alternate years of 1920s. Just after the end of the Great War, the game lets you control giant diesel punk mechs combining epic single player and co-op campaigns as well as skirmishes with intense action battle and on the battlefield for multiplayer fans we're going a little late of course into the junes because we did not cover this before this so be prepared blah blah, blah. need for speed hot pursuit console pc e, uh with ea play june 24th feel the thrill of the chase and the rush the escape i love that and need for speed hot pursuit yeah. remaster coming june 24th game pass for pc and ultimate via ea play it's time to reignite the pursuit uh Pro Deus game preview PC ID at Xbox June 24th. Get ready to paint the walls red featuring a handcrafted campaign from industry FPS veterans over the top gory visuals and a built-in community map browser for instantaneous action with nearly limitless levels to play. Perduus is the retro shooter you've been waiting for. Uh, Perduus looks great. It uh, looks like a basically a doom. It looks like doom. Okay. Um, one Emmett Walker Jr. Uh, posted this on Twitter. It looks pretty cool. Mm, okay. Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts comes to cloud July 1st. The heroic bear and bird return at last to defend Spiral Mountain from the Nemesis. Oh, that looks like a slur, but it's not. Gruntilda. Groundbreaking vehicular platforming awaits in a wild new old world. Packed with features and faces old and new. Build awe inspiring vehicles and tackle the jiggy challenges in any way you see fit. My God, these are some questionable things they're saying. Bug Fables, the everlasting sapling. Cloud console, PC, ID at Xbox, July 1st. Small heroes, big adventures. Follow V, Kabu, and Leaf in their epic journey to find their everlasting sapling. Explore and combine your team's abilities, solve puzzles, defeat powerful enemies, and find ancient treasures. God, how many more are there? Gang Beast, cloud console and PC. ID at Xbox July 1st. Gangs Beast is a silly multi-platform party game with surreal gelatinous characters, brutal slapstick fight sequences, and absurd hazardous environments set into the mean streets of Beef City. Customize your character and fight enemies in a melee game mode or fight with friends against the gangs of Beef City in the gang game mode. Sound like you make the way you say it makes me not want to play it. <laughs> you want to go to Beef, Beef City, Alan? Yeah, come, let's go get gelatinous. some beef characters no thanks immortal realms vampire wars cloud console and pc july 1st immortal realms vampire warriors is an engaging strategy game set in the dark vampire world in turmoil combining empire management and turn-based combat with unique card game elements descend doing? into a mystical world filled with horrors and legends and hurry yourself into a compelling gothic epos paired with challenging game experience oh my god forest all right limbo cloud console and pc id at xbox july 1st limbo is an award-winning indie adventure critically acclaimed for its captivating puzzle design and immersive sound and visuals it's dark <laughs> misty spaces and haunting narrative will stay with you forever <laughs> thank you i was wondering if you get i wondered if you catch it yeah um i was like he's, he sounds like one of those like like, a, like old timey a, is what i was going for radio yeah, people old, old time yeah and yeah i was like courage i got really <laughs> <laughs> if you have game pass ultimate i got some good news for you got eight more oh, cloud enabled too. games dirt five double kick heroes east shade empire of sins haven octopath traveler torchlight three yakuza like a dragon <laughs> i'm sorry i wasn't expecting these two words put together dlc and game updates black desert and bugatti event until july 7th and oh my God. 
Enjoy the collaboration of the Black Desert and Bugatti through the special quests and branded accessories. Get precious rewards to increase the speed of the mountain by completing quests. Please give... I need visuals, Alex, please. Also check out the items with the Bugatti brand in the shop as well. Bugatti Chiron outfit set. Bugatti Chiron horse gear set. Bugatti earrings for men. <laughs> Dancing so, elephant earrings so for women are available. It's literally a horse with a cloth over it, and the cloth is colored blue and purple with the Bugatti logo. Ah. Same as same as the knight. The knight is like so, wearing like a cloth with the Bugatti logo on it, so on his shoulder. I'm at a loss for words. You can wear a Bugatti suit of armor as well. <laughs> I didn't mean that to find. <laughs> oh, God. Dead by Bugatti Daylight, the Resident Evil, Evil chapter available now. Xbox Game Pass members save ten percent. On the Resident Evil chapter, label now with Dead by Daylight. It includes a killer, <laughs> the nemesis, two survivors, Leon S. Kennedy and Jill Valentine, and a new map of the iconic Raccoon City Police Station. Hmm. Halo, the Master Chief Collection Season 7 starts today. Season 7 is kicking off today. It's the latest free update for Halo, the Master Chief Collection. I'm waiting for he gives up. Enjoy Halo 3 Elite Armor sets, two new Halo 3 maps, and even more cosmetics to obtain in Halo 4 and Halo Combat Evolved. Plus, in celebration on Halo's Infinite Multiplayer reveal, unlock the Halo Infinite Inspired Keystone Helmet for use in Halo 4. Take a swig of water. I'm sure that hurt your throat for a second. It sure did, Alex. It sure did. <laughs> I could, I'll take the next couple. Microsoft Flight Simulator World Update. You see how nice he sounds? Nordics. Available now. The virtual world in Microsoft's Flight Simulator is getting its latest major update, one with a focus of Europe's Nordic countries in Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Norway, and Sweden. Renown, renowned for its natural splendor and architectural wonder, this region has been rendered in its most realistic fidelity yet in World Update 5 Nordics. Minecraft Sonic the Hedgehog DLC. <laughs> I was wondering how long you'd wait. I was like, I'm going to sit here and wait and see how long it takes them to read it. Minecraft Sonic the Hedgehog DLC available now. Xbox Game Pass members save 10%. Sonic the Hedgehog races into oh Minecraft God, at supersonic speed. Sprint, roll, and spring off enemies through iconic zones with epic gameplay. You can also explore... That was really good. Holy shit. That was really good. That sounded like he was doing it. You can also explore a limited time in-server event with The Hive. And get a free Sonic 30th Anniversary Garment Skin. NBA 2K21 Season 8 Trials of Champions available now. As the battle for supremacy heats up in NBA playoffs, my team is taking the trials of champions into the virtual hardwood. In Season 8, six NBA stars win a game of rings and compete in limited. See who will reign supreme. Defeat new challenges and agendas on your way to level 40 or recreate a pivotal moment in Kevin Durant's career in Season 8's signature challenge. This is what I want. No, for no, honor no, year five no, season no, two no, mirage is what you want no, okay no, we'll no, go no, play some for armor available now through july 1st scratched out september 9th <laughs> which looks hilarious xbox game pass members save 10 percent on the year five season two battle pass a sudden drought has befallen heathmore both horkos and chimera struggle to survive gear up for the heat with the year five season two battle pass get 100 tiers of rewards for all heroes to unlock new weapons mood effects and a paired emotes get the battle bundle to instantly unlock Unlock 25 tiers of progression available during year five, season two only. Today, today, today. Sea of Thieves of Pirate's Life available now. It's time to set sail in search of Jack Captain Jack Sparrow to save the seas of these from threats Jack. sailing from beyond the horizon in Sea of Thieves of Pirate's Life. A free update available now as part of season three. First off, a lot of people shitting on the guy who's voicing Jack Sparrow. Sounds good to me. All right. Oh, dude, he sounds. I I thought it was Johnny Depp. No, Johnny Depp isn't getting out of his fucking wine I, stupor to, to go I know he's record for Microsoft. That's what I'm saying. That's how it's close it sounds. It sounds really good. People getting naked out of here. They're voice negative. Acting, negative Nancy's. Negative Nancy's, all of them. Yeah, yeah, voice acting is pretty hard. That's why I'm so good at it. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order Series X and S update. Available now via EA Play. Next gen release provides the best possible way to experience Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order on consoles, bringing technical improvements including higher resolution textures and assets, 4K HDR resolution, improved 60 frames per second performance, and significantly faster loading times. 
I love that they had to use the word significantly. Like, like you won't imagine how fast these load times are. You just won't imagine them. Elder Scrolls Online Console Enhanced Series X and S update available now. Experience the Elder Scrolls Online now optimized for Series X and S. Available as a free upgrade. Enjoy visuals and techno improvements like new performance mode with 60 frames per second or fidelity mode with 4K resolution. Increase draw distance, shorter loading screens, and more. Export Tamria like never before. Game Pass Ultimate Perks. Oh my god. Oh, here we go. It's Space Jam and New Legacy the game July 1st. Play as LeBron, Bugs, and Lola as they face the Goon Squad in a wacky basketball beat em up. Claim between July 1st and July 15th to get exclusive early access and play the full game through Xbox Game Pass Ultimate Perks. So we're getting a game of I, I don't I don't think you want to look too much into it. I think I think we're using the, the, the term game lightly here. I think it's gonna be a lot of just hitting A and it's gonna be very quick. Okay. Cause that's what I say. Really, a game that's free with Game Pass, but not on Game Pass. It's on Game Pass Ultimate Perks. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's getting early access. I don't, I don't know. It's kind of unclear what you're getting to. Who cares? Uh, yeah. Fantasy yeah. Star Online Two New Genesis June Member Monthly Bonus available now. Speaking of Genesis, are you gonna play Apex with me? Jump into the all new. Fantasy Star Online 2 New Genesis with some items to give you a hand. N half scap dolls times five to help revive you during intense battles. And photon chucks times 50 to strengthen weapons and units. What is happening right now? Disney Plus. Enjoy endless series, movies, and originals. Available now. Get your 30 day trial to Disney Plus and start streaming today. Valid for new Disney Plus subscribers only. 18 plus only. Terms apply. Why 18 plus only? I think because they want a credit joking. card, right? A oh. <laughs> 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 <You didn't>. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving Drew Thirth. Leaving. <laughs> <laughs> You just not caught it, man. <laughs> Leaving June thirtieth. Leaving June thirtieth. This, there is some time left to go back into these. Why am I reading this? Battle Leaving chasers. June thirtieth. Console PC. Why am I reading that? Marvel Skype got infinite. Missed over. Monster Hunter World. Uh, Out of the Park Baseball Twenty One. Outer Wilds. Soul Calibur Six and The Messenger. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, my mouth hurts. That's all for coming soon to Game Pass. That was a that was a lengthy one this week. Um, thank you for assisting, Alex. I was falling apart near the end there. Yeah, I could see, but fucking all right. <laughs> July twenty first, Xbox Live Gold players are receiving Planet Alpha, Rock of Ages three, Make and Break, Midway Arcade Origins, and Conquer Live and Reloaded. I do not have the um days for this, Alex. If you don't mind looking this up really quickly while I cover PS Plus. I just like to have the stuff for the achievers. I forgot to get it. Games of gold, right? Yeah. Yep, and just give me the dates for them. Uh, coming to PS Plus in July, A Plague's Tale Innocence is your PS5 game for the month. Call of Duty Black Ops 4 and WWE 2K Battlegrounds is your PS4 games of the month. Pretty good month. Battle Black Ops and Plague's Tale. Great games. Make sure to claim them. Even if you do not have a PS5, make sure you claim the PS5 games. It does not matter if you have one. You can claim them anyways. Go on their website. It is free mm -hmm. and you'll have a bunch of games when you get the ps5 um don't be a loser planet, planet alpha is july 1st through the 31st so you can play it all month rock of ages 3 is the 16th to the august 15th jesus uh xbox make uh, the midway arcade origins 16th to the 31st of july and then conquers july 1st to the 15th all that starts july 6th for the ps plus games it's always the first tuesday of the month Always the first Tuesday of the month when the PS Plus. Alex, hmm. that's the news for the week. We like to end the show kind of like we started, very chill and relaxed. Very, very energized week this week, and there's only one way to end the week like this is relaxing, talking about what we're going to do for the upcoming week. Alex, I'm going to ask you a question. What's queued up? Now, this, of course, can be a video game, a game, some sort of graphic novel, a comic book, a book, Sort of movie TV show. 
What's got you queued up for the week? What are you going to be watching, listening to, or reading? Um, I haven't played much at all in the last two weeks because uh, with the traveling and then yeah. just being tired. You got a life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that too. Um, I've been. I finally started doing the event for Apex. I'm enjoying it. Um, I'm actually trying to get to Diamond for oh. ranked. I'm really oh. a, a couple hundred points away from Platinum. So Interesting. I'm almost there. Okay. And uh, I'm went back to Ratchet and Clank so I can finish that because I actually never got to finish that. Whenever you finish it, we'll have a spoiler cast for you, Achievers. Yep. Mass Effect Three is still incoming. Like I said, we've been busy. Apologies, yep. but it's coming. Yep. I am probably going to be doing more Destiny. I got back into the Destiny grind, having a great time. Did some Grandmasters, got my power level up all the way. Um, I think I'm going to go... I have a weird inclination to watch Quentin Tarantino movies because I've never seen them. But one of my favorite movies of all time is... um. Uh, let me not speak out of my ass. Uh, Django Unchained, which is by Quentin Tarantino, right? I want sure to say yes. You talking about that's the newest one with uh with um not new but Jamie yeah. well the Jamie Foxx one with Leonardo yes. DiCaprio one yeah. yes this should be why is it so hard to see thank you directed by yes I want to make sure it is. I want to see that so I want to watch Reservoir Dogs I want to watch um there's one more God I'm already blanking on it damn it it's not important I'm watching a bunch of Quentin Tarantino news I've always wanted to watch them I haven't yet so probably gonna be watching a bunch of Quentin Tarantino movies. Uh, I need to catch back up on Loki. I've only seen the first two episodes, so I'm technically yeah, I'm missing episode two episodes four. behind now. Missing last week's and this week's, so I gotta watch two episodes now. Um, which, by the way, the show's fantastic so far. Love mm -hmm. it. Fucking love it. Um, oh, Pulp Fiction was another one, though, by the way. Yeah, that's another one I'll probably watch. I've never seen that Once one. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yes, I wanna watch that, too. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. In, yes, I wanna watch that. Inglorious Bastards. You ever watch yes, that? Yes, I wanna watch that, too. Glorious Bastards. Yes, I wanna watch All that. All the Kill Bills. Never watched those. I, I, as a kid, I watched some of them. I watched but. the first one a long time ago. As a kid, I watched... I think I watched all of them off and on as a kid, but... I, I, was an, I watched the first one for a lot... Like, and I first watched it, I was like, why is this, like, a female Bruce Lee? Dope. She was wearing she's so the, cool. Yeah, she was wearing the, 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 yellow, the, yeah. the yellow suit. Yeah, 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 she's so cool. Like one of, That was, like, kind of, kind of the first, like... What, what are they called? Hero, heroines? Hero, I don't know. Her heroines? Heroines, thank you. One of the first heroines I saw like on like like on a, mm -hmm. a TV, I, as far as I remember. Pretty sure it was. Um, and she saw cool. That big one samurai of sword. It was Underworld. Uh, oh, yeah. I don't know which one would be first for me. Probably underworld. underworld for me. I don't remember which one I saw first. Probably I, I did, I had Underworld. Developed my, that was my first uh, like like actress crush actress crush yeah i get that yeah. that was probably everyone that was probably a lot of kids sexual awakening van Keep... i mean remember van helsing the movie van helsing oh of course i do with oh, hugh God. jackman the yes. chick that's her oh yeah no she's very yeah, attractive so. very attractive hugh jackman is too yeah for sure <laughs> alex there's a little game called doki doki literature club would you play that what Doki Doki Literature Club. Would you play that Doki with me? Doki Doki Literature Club. Yes. Could you specify what it entails? Uh, yeah, it's like a visual novel game. Uh, you, you kind of pick choices and stuff. I want to play it with you. Doki, Would you play it with me? Doki Literature Club. Yeah. Most likely, yes, I will play it with you. Cool. This will be more of an experience of like, like I want to try and stream this in some way. Don't know how we're going to do this. Oh, it's interesting. It's I mean, it's definitely it's anime-ish. So it's anime-ish, it's yeah. It's my thing. Yeah. So I want to play this. We'll figure it out eventually. Okay. okay. I just want to bring that to your attention. We're gonna be playing that sometime. I want to see if we can stream it. If not, is there a reason? Like, what came across this idea? It's a popular streaming game. Got it. It's one of those things where like, let's 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 try something. I feel like this is a okay. good one to start with. It's very funny. Okay. Well, it says it's on PC. It is on PC now. It's on PS. It's already out on PS5 digitally, and I believe on Xbox digitally yeah, as well. It's PC, Switch, PlayStation, Xbox. Yeah, I think it's out digitally for everything, and physically it doesn't come out for like another month. Okay. Will you write the way into her heart? Oh my God. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'll buy it. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Anyways, okay. that's the week for you. What do you got queued up for the week? Remember. Leave it down below. We always love hearing from you. Yeah. 
I was trying to think of a question to ask the achievers, but I guess I just don't. Ask us a question. Here's up. I'll read it next week. Comment below. Remember, patreon.com slash achievers. That's how you support us financially. It's a rough time out there, so make sure you take care of yourself before you take care of us. Mm-hmm. We love you. Remember. Go Chief. Go Chief.